Ah, right. Mute. Good morning. Welcome to Parkway United Church of Christ, where through God's spirit, we seek to listen deeply, build community, and act for justice. What an honor it is to pause as we gather, to remember those who lived and stewarded this land for generations. Indigenous nations like the Chira, the Sora, Kiawi, Tutelo. And not only the way they stewarded the land, but the, the legacy and inspiration of gender equity in those matrilineal cultures. We also pause to recognize that in this place, we still live with the legacy of those who are enslaved under the bounds of white supremacy culture. And so we call upon the sacred spirit to continue to embolden us for courageous healing and justice. Whether you are in the sanctuary space on Zoom or on Facebook Live, you are welcome here. No matter your racial or ethnic identity, you are welcome here. Regardless of your sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, you are welcome here. No matter where you live, how you kind of come to your sense of spirituality, whether you are a definitely an extrovert or an introvert or somewhere in between, no matter who you are, no matter where you are along life's journey, I invite you for opening our gathering prayer to rise in whatever way you feel comfortable and are able to. That could mean standing, it could just be sitting up. And maybe just stretch and reach, breathe in. 
And maybe we seek to harmonize for a moment together just with a deep, ah. And maybe just being alive today, breathing a nice, wow. Alleluia. Holy and merciful one, we do give thanks for this opportunity to gather in your sacred spirit, to sense your aliveness for our wholeness and for our quest for equity and shalom this day and all of the days ahead. Amen. Our opening hymn is from the New Century Hymnal. All people that on earth do dwell, number seven. Francie, please use Mavery. Hey, I like your bow and your hair. Thank you. You're welcome. Video blanked out. Oh well. <laughs> Peace be with you. I'm I'm not uh, sick today, so my laying low. Whoever said that piece? <laughs> The sound is muted.
Let's pause for a moment to center in. I invite you to if, maybe soften your gaze, even close your eyes for a moment and get in touch with a moment so far today that you really like to savor. Could be merely the taste of that cup of coffee. Bring back that aroma, that flavor, that warmth. Could be the sensation of the shower stream on the back of your neck this morning. It could be the way somebody greeted you when you walked into this space today. Could be a, a modeled bright colored leaf on the walk. Bring that back for just a moment as much as you can. Experience it as vividly as you can. Notice what's happening in your body as you move into that remembering. Friends in spiritual community, you have that now in the storehouse of your nervous system. Sometime today, someone or something will try to knock you off your game. And you have that gift, that savoring to return to for just a moment to slow down how you respond. We move to our time of celebrations and prayer concerns. I'm going to invite those on Zoom to enter into the chat function, that which you celebrate or seek to lift up in prayer. And while you do that, I will offer a few things I'm aware of, and then we'll offer opportunity for those in the sanctuary by a sentence to do the same. I just want to offer deep gratitude today. It's not always expressed verbally, but for Sterling and Anna, the bedrock of our music ministry, out of which our wellspring of expression and praise is possible. I'm grateful for the way many of you have turned in commitments of ways you will engage in ministry here and beyond in the year ahead. The nominating committee's report, the way you've responded to those invitations, maybe stretching a little bit. Gratitude to this community of faith. We continue to um, remember in our congregation many, including Ralph and Ann, who continue their treatment, the families of Susan and Tyra who died last weekend, those who struggle with mental health challenges, family issues, loneliness. I just got word uh, before worship. Um, Vicki uh, uh, has been in the emergency room this morning with severe leg pain, so we hold Vicki in prayer. We are delighting and giving thanks with Susan A., that she has a new grandson, Zachariah, born this week in Savannah, Georgia, to her daughter, Rebecca, and son-in-law, Tariq. Thanks be to God for Zachariah. Uh, Beth J. celebrates that people turned out on Tuesday to exercise their right to vote. Uh, Peggy. Yeah. 
for Mel, Nancy, Gary, and Norma. We'll also include prayers for Paul and Carolyn as Paul continues to recover from surgery. Craig. For Craig's sister, Joanne. We pray for Judy and her struggle with sciatica. Yes. For Levi, that he may fully recover from sickness. What a delight to have uh, folks join us, maybe for the first time or second time. I have to just say how grateful I am that our old friend Rick is with us today. Good to see you, Rick. Any others? Grateful for good friends, longstanding new ones from Tony on the chat. Let's just take a moment to let these prayer requests and gratitude resonate. And then we will move to our prayer that Jesus taught in the language and tradition of your choosing. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us out into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom our we receive our song of preparation. This morning we sang Waymaker, and I encourage you to think on the words. And I think most of us do realize that the God that we serve is a way maker. No matter what we are dealing with or going through in our personal lives or with our families, just remember that he is a way maker. Miracle worker, promise. 
Jesus keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, and I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, and I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Turning lives around, and I worship you, Lord. I worship you. You are, you are here, and mending every heart. And I worship you. I worship you. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you You are here. People of God, can you smell it? Can you hear it? Mm. Thanks be to God. Well, uh, we, for the last months as a church, have been traipsing through the season that uh, liturgists call Second Pentecost season. And we're coming to an end next week. And the Revised Common Lectionary says, keep on moving. And we're going to give you this uh, hopeful passage from the prophet Isaiah, what some call 
the start of third Isaiah from Isaiah 65. So uh, tune in to these words from the prophet. For I am about to create a new heaven and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more, no more shall be the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infinite who lives but a few days or an old person that does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at 100 years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of 100 will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. Inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountains, says Adonai. This is what the spirit is saying to the churches, thanks be to God. Well, if we get real right off the bat, it's pretty easy, I think, to tune out the hopeful imagination of the prophets. It's easy to tune out the words of judgment, but I think it's even more difficult for us to take seriously the grand visions of shalom that come from the prophets. Yeah, sure, equity in the land, Isaiah. Sure, all children thriving, non-segregated public schools, no, pub, no medical debt. Sweet prophet, sure, go on. None of the former things remembered. Mm. We listen to these imaginings and it's hard not to be pretty jaded because we just don't want to open ourselves up to more disappointment. You know, mostly preachers are taught, you not only profile the trouble in the passage, but you have to trouble the, the troubles in the world and our lives today. Well, you can list a litany of 12 things right off the bat that are jangling your spirit right now. And friends, it's easy for us to forget that mostly all of the debilitating things that rise in your heart, that same stuff was going on when the prophet Isaiah spoke into the circumstances of Judah, and actually is still speaking into our circumstances today. You know, if you look in the chapter before what we read, Adonai says to the people, if you don't take care of one another, if you don't turn your attention within and between to the breath, and the power of love that I'm offering you every instant, you're going to keep destroying yourselves, one another, and the earth. So let me just say, we don't need to picture when we read passages like this, a God who sits around benefiting some and crushing others by some rule book 
We get to read these descriptions instead as ultimate directions of sacred energy, favoring life and peace with justice, authentic life, deep connection, shalom. Because the loving mystery, it says, there's, I'm creating a new heaven and earth. Well, the loving mystery creates a new heaven and earth every single day, every moment of the day. And we get to turn our attention to that new creating. Right where the dung and the dingle dongs show up in our lives. And watch this. This vision of shalom doesn't start with policy recommendations. Everything in this vision blooms from what? An emotional experience of sacred energy, an emotional experience, an embodied experience, if you can imagine the, the, the godding having a body. We focus on a lot of attributes of God. But how often, this is the challenge of the text, how often do we focus on the Holy One's delight and exuberance with us? Look at the passage. Take a look at your bulletin or the Bible. I am about to create a house of shalom, Jerusalem as joy, Kiev as joy, Islamabad as joy, Winston-Salem as joy. I will rejoice in your city and delight in my people. And what's our first response to be to that? Joy. Be glad, it says, and rejoice forever in what I am creating. Always creating. In every organella and enzyme every day. And what happens in Jerusalem? What happens at Parkway? Ricochets in all of the cosmos. See, all joy is intimate and local, and yet it impacts everything everywhere. We respond in joy, and then joy just keeps building in the sacred energy. So a new world which we're dreaming of, it's not up to us. But it is up to us to participate in it. First, in the experience of joy. You know, if you, if you look around a little bit, we realize that scientifically, we don't know a lot about joy. You know, there's been tons of research on virtually every other human emotional experience, but we have yet to really get our heads around, what is this thing called joy? We know it's a bodily burst of excitement. We know some often it's a surprise of getting reconnected or connected for the first time with someone or something we really value. The people who are doing the research says, you know, a quest for happiness, that's a lost cause. But you can cultivate joy. Mostly, and this is not the sacred text, this is science saying this, mostly by reaching out, by giving, builds joy. Mostly by cultivating gratitude feeds joy, mostly by a sense of spirituality, of spiritual practice. It feeds joy. This is what the science is saying. They write about the cycle of goodness, that when you pause and deepen your gratitude, it feeds the joy. And when you feed the joy, you're more attentive to the gratitude. When we show love and mercy, when we make steps, little steps toward equity and compassion and healing, as difficult as that is, as painful as that sometimes is, it's, it has a strong possibility of feeding joy. When we deepen connection to earth and soil and birds and one another and strangers, 
when we deepen our connection to the sacred breath flowing through us, we feed joy. It's when and how we begin to string together these unpredictable bursts of delight and then weave the wolf of authentic community across that to make shalom more possible. You see, the prophet, prophet talks about all these people are going to live at least to the age of 100 in this passage. The prophet is not talking about that biologically. The prophet is talking about that theologically, that we're always going to be connected to sacred presence. And that's what quality of life ought to look like for everybody. So let me pause here for a second. If you're experiencing depression, if you're so anxious you cannot tap into the sense of joy, the promise is God delights in you no matter what. If you're numb to that joyful presence or numb to the things that used to excite you in life, Remember, God's tenderness rejoices for you, even when you don't have access to that experience right now. It is the cherishing and the nurturing of the soul that the prophet is speaking about. And when we're able to do that, it's interesting, some of the things that we long for in, be, in community slowly begin to unfold oftentimes before us. There's a poet by the name of Naira Wahid, Wahid rather, who has this juicy little poem and writes, do not choose the lesser life. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Choose the life seducing your lungs, dripping down your chin. You know, there are a lot of things, a lot of people, there are a lot of cultural forces in our life asking us to choose a lesser life and to serve that, to become beholden to something other than the truth in our souls. And mostly these are the things that create fear, anxiety, anger, depression, violence, shutting down, utter destruction of civic life and our planet. It's not shalom. And yet the harder, the riskier path is allowing something in our lungs to seduce us. To let the things that most enliven us and delight us to like drip down our chins for the whole world to see and let nobody take a napkin and, and dab it off. Hmm, that's when sacred presence cartwheels across the Milky Way and sings hallelujah deep bass tones out of the black holes and whispers eros in the ears of all the mollusks in the sea. Isaiah is speaking to us about nothing other than obedience. Oh, now I know you're getting the heebie-jeebies talking about obedience in church. But Adonai wants obedience. Not some slavish march step to external authority that's going to cramp our authenticity. No. But obedience to the truthful energy flowing through us that is dimpled and sealed by relationships that matter to us and discerned in every new awakening. Because when we're not obedient to the deep things that are true in us and for us, 
We're going to constantly chase after that thing that we think is going to give us uniqueness or that thing that's going to fill our desire. And all those things are going to merely pull us away from our authentic and joyful purpose for being here right now. It is important for us as people of faith to fight for right policy and right government. There's no question about it. And it all begins with creating a community of fierce allies with each other where we can experience this truth. A space to know that authentic seduction in our lungs. And that's not always easy. Fierce allies always don't just coddle us and make us feel good. Because we can't do this by ourselves. We just really can't. It's at the very core of what spiritual community should be. We can throw a lot of other stuff out the window, but if we don't have the capacity to bring peace and justice with joy without a fierceness with and for each other, we don't have anything. One of the book groups online who meets every week at Parkway was laughing with each other on Thursday when, when we were talking about simply paying attention to breath. He said, maybe we all just need to come in here on a Sunday morning and practice lamas. Because we have the hope that we're birthing something new out of this pain. Someone out of deep, trusting community work said the other day, I spoke with somebody in my life whom I've needed to really speak to for a very long time. And I spoke with tenderness and respect for their interests, for their feelings. But I also spoke really honestly from my heart. And I spoke my truth. And you know what? It went okay. And then said, when I left that conversation, I said to myself, ooh, this is what integrity feels like. Rebecca Solnit, always an insightful commentator, wrote recently about the climate crisis. Solnit wrote, the things that we thought absolutely impossible and inconceivable just a few years ago, are some of them are now accepted as norms. So a lot of my hope is radical uncertainty. A lot of my hope is radical uncertainty. It's not enough to predict doom. We have a long way to go but our work leans into something other than the cynicism of mere apocalypse. So friends in worship, we let our attention to sacred joy spill into our lungs with seduction. We let the squealing delight of imagination take hold of our soul nerve. We let the unfolding new creation drip down our chins. So a couple of questions to ponder as we move to hearing Jeannie's musical response. Where have you noticed the lung seducing joy in your life you want to give more attention to? Where have you noticed that? authentic seduction that you want to really pay more attention to? And where have you seen real joy and deep connection lead to justice, lead to shalom in community?
we're grateful for all the different kinds of offering of attention and prayer, presence, leadership, financial gifts. I'm going to take a moment to speak to the Facebook Live members of the congregation, whether you've ever been in this building or not. And I know it's probably likely that you've already logged off because you get to pick and choose when you're on Facebook Live, but I'm going to say it anyway, we value you, we need you, we thank you. And of the Zoom community out there, grateful for your connections. Help us continue to make our commitment possible to hybrid worship from here on out. So you can... Um, put a, uh, something on the, in the plate in back. If you're in the sanctuary, you can go to our website and click on that little tab to make an offering. You can send a check into the church office and we thank you. Speaking of which, it, it is really that uh, time. So if you've not had uh, opportunity to respond to the stewardship invitation, if that that commitment card is a bookmark in a book by the bedside or is lost, we'll get you another one. But, you know, this is really essential for our finance team and our church council to be able to put together a proposed ministry plan for 2023 to present to you in just a couple of weeks that you can vote on and to, to feel good about that. So please respond. Because next Sunday, in actuality, is our recommitment Sunday, our celebration Sunday. And in so doing, if, if you've already made, filled out forms and turned in things, great. Whether you have or not, we invite you to bring something for our, our commitment wreath. We're going to create a commitment wreath. The circle is a sign of commitment and unity. You could bring uh, dried berries. You could bring... Um, some dried grasses or, or, or flowers, whatever. And you'll bring that forward next Sunday as you are able to our table. And then you will receive the communion elements. And we're going to move around the outside of the sanctuary because I know you've missed that with, a, with our individual cups and a wafer. And we'll receive communion together next Sunday as our ritual of recommitment. Just a reminder, this Friday, one o'clock, we celebrate the life of our Parkway friend, Susan Dyer. All day Saturday, nine to four here in our fellowship hall, mental health first aid training. And then Sunday afternoon at three in the space, we celebrate the life of Betsy Clausen. I'm gonna appeal to you. This congregation has made a deep commitment over the last four to five years in support of the SHARE Food Co-op. They have opened, as you probably know, the Harvest Market. It's open all through the week, right there on the corner of Peters Creek and Academy. Try to figure out how now to make that a practice to buy groceries there. And not only that, to invite friends, neighbors, family members, to go with you so that you can, you can introduce them to this opportunity. Share Harvest Market. You'll see on the bottom of the bulletin a note, our Minister Emeritus Tom Mann will be signing copies of his new book this Wednesday at 7 o'clock at Salem Town. So take a look at that. You know, it's a mere six weeks from today that we will be worshiping on Sunday, December 25th. Yes, Christmas Day falls on a Sunday. It's going to be an informal worship, worship service. We'll, um, uh, our nurture committee is going to have some, some uh, beverages for us to, to sh or not beverages, but something to, to, to eat. In, in our worship service. Um, you're welcome to wear sweats, 
or whatever is comfortable, whatever you would get up and, and wear early on Christmas morning. But he, this is what I'm, my invitation is. Consider writing a poem or a prose paragraph in response to the question, where am I in the Christmas story? Where do you show up? Where do you find connection in that infancy narrative in the Gospel of Luke? Where am I in the Christmas story? If you want to talk more about it, I'd be thrilled to have a conversation with you. I know that our musicians are going to help us sing this closing song. We've only sung a few times, Shout to the North. We are going to shout to the north, we want to shout to the south, to the east and the west. <laughs> Diane, are you sure we're done with that one? <laughs> Women of faith and of doubt rise up. Men of gathering courage, maybe sit down. Those of you who are gender non-binary, keep pressing on. Mollusks of the sea and Eastern Phoebe of the sky, keep on making the connections. We go forth in a just peace with joy. Amen. Amen.